July 28, 2023. Ukraine war, approximately nine years and six months into the invasion of Crimea. Day 520 of Special Putin's operations. Big picture. Happy Statehood Day. Nechai Bob Blagoslavite Ukraine. Very little in the way of line changes announced by either side in the last day, with only 21 ground combat engagements from both sides, half of what we were seeing at the beginning of July. Ukraine will likely have to spend time clearing mines from areas captured in the last week before they can coordinate more large pushes. Kremlin mouthpieces are unconvincingly selling the attack outside Kovalivka as a continuing great success, but the front hasn't moved in 48 hours and other Russian bloggers have claimed Moscow's forces have been forced to withdraw from large sections of the valleys. It appears Ukraine may be successfully using the S-200 telephone pole-sized anti-air missile as a cruise missile with limited accuracy. Dnieper Line 28 targets of artillery and a total of 181 shells used to attack Hesorn. Two civilian men were injured by the aimless shelling. Zaporizhia Front No mapped line changes, but videos are surfacing showing Ukrainian troops at recently abandoned positions of Kremlin forces. Moscow's troops are sharing close quarters near the Morkioli due to being displaced from their former positions. Perhaps this lack of room is why they expended three assaults into Ukrainians. East Front, Donetsk. Attacks at Marienka continue. Attacks from the south side of Avdiykva may be getting the Russian army some foothold closer to the city proper, though neither side has claimed any line movements. Bakhmut area. The Kremlin ordered three attacks around Klishchivka and were able to enter the village. Ukraine appears to continue to hold the high ground in the hillside west of the village. This placement of forces is making holding the village an unfortunate job for the Chechnyans being sent forward. On the plus side, they won't be discomforted long, and many will shortly find out if they do indeed get their virgins, fighting for the Kremlin. Oskol border front. Conflicting reports of the conditions on the ground. Kremlin mouthpieces declare attacks continue to push. As noted, other sources say that the Kremlin was forced to give up large swaths. It remains to be seen how many forces the Kremlin will feed into these valleys. Drone operators will have fun flying routes, as the front here is relatively extreme in vertical changes. When tree cover is taken into account, spotting anything may require eyes like a hawk. Northern border. Ukrainian troops found a sabotage unit of the Kremlin's making and destroyed them. Shelling continues to target residential facilities, clearly outlining what most people think of as war crimes. Black Sea. Ukraine appears to have made a missile strike on the cities of Targan Rok and Azov in Russia, near Rostov on Don. Kremlin naval ships have threatened cargo carriers. The Russian Black Sea fleet has 15 warships on patrol, apparently deciding that if they are going to sink to Ukrainian drones and missiles, they might as well make it more sporting and give them moving targets. Ukraine world related. Finland is preparing plans for how they will aid Ukraine in rebuilding. North Korean provided rockets, captured by Ukraine, are found not working properly some 30 to 40 years after their creation. The Ukrainian fencing competitor Olga Karlin, who bested her Russian opponent two to one strikes, has been reinstated in the championships as it was proven that her return to the mat to cross blades counts as a proper act of respect under COVID guidelines. An advisor to Zelensky has reported that to properly defend Ukraine from Russian missile strikes, Ukraine needs at least 10 Patriot, or similar, systems. He rightfully remarked that providing these up front is likely far cheaper than rebuilding a destroyed Ukraine. We aim to bring more. Like and subscribe.